Hi, and welcome to a new episode of our Uncut, the Feminine podcast. If you're new here, I'm Juana, founder of thefeminine.com, an online platform dedicated to women all over the world, a gracious community of fabulous women who care and share questions, secrets, and stories about every possible thing that makes a woman. From life, creation, healing, nurturing, love, compassion, and intuition, and everything in between. For the past 14 years, I've been a transformational coach, entirely dedicating my last seven years to empowering women all over the world to trust their voice, follow their heart, and embrace their womanhood completely. On this episode of The Uncut, we're going to exchange some views about a very important topic in our womanhood, emotions. Call it emotional well-being, emotional detachment, or even emotional education. But basically, we're going to speak about how to deal with difficult emotions, how to understand them better, and how to integrate them in a healthy feminine way. My partner in this conversation is Joanna, my colleague, and we're going to jump now into exploring more what triggers us about emotions. Why are they so important for us to discover, explore and navigate through them? Hi, Juana. But let me uh, start with saying that I'm not going to jump in this subject. I'm going to lean into this subject because it's a little bit scary for me. I don't know why, what I was thinking while I was preparing uh, this podcast. It's different from the previous ones. It I find it difficult even asking questions about emotions. And I was trying to understand what why this is happening. Is there an explanation? Why is it happening? You tell me. <laughs> I think What's it's so scary about emotions. I think it's part fear, mm-hmm. part like I'm thinking about them like a big unknown. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in theory, even if sometimes they seem clear, you can identify fear, you can identify anger, you can identify anxiety. When it's happening to you, it's impossible to understand what's going on, which is which, what triggers what. How can we navigate through this world of emotion so that we can at least understand what's happening in that very moment? By accepting the fact that we as humans have emotions and by accepting uh, all range, all spectrum of emotions from negative to positive ones and not judging the negative ones especially, then this fear you're talking about will melt, will dissipate. And the moment we take this point of view that it is okay to have emotions and actually emotion uh, can give us uh, a whole insight into our own humanity, into our own personal process, then you can change your perspective from fear of the unknown into curiosity. And that opens up a new perspective, which makes you the detective of your own emotions and puts you in a much more powerful seat in your own process the seat where I am observing what's going on and I really want to know, I want to find out, I want to discover. And I think this is very important for a woman because it will bring a lot of fluidity in your own process. And it's important, both the emotions and the fluidity, because they make up who you are as a woman. It's important for all human beings, but for women, I think it's critical. So jumping through the fear of the unknown into curiosity and uh, letting your emotions guide you into a whole range of textures, notions, interpretations about life. Is there any magical formula? Because one thing I'm doing, I don't know if it's a common thing or it's only me, but when you feel stuck with an emotion, you just seem to be waiting for a magical formula, but then... When you look at yourself from the outside, you have that moment when you realize that it's rather more about practicing this process you were talking about than finding a magical formula that's going to help you get over something. How much is about practice in learning how to deal with our emotions? Everything. Um, We get stuck emotionally because we 
we instinctively try to uh, negate our emotions or dismiss them or try to put them under the cover. And that's exactly what creates the blockage. So whenever you are in an emotional state of being, and I know it's easier with positive emotions because you just want to hang in there. <laughs> the problem is with the negative ones. The moment you are, for example, in a very intense charged state of being on an emotional level and you feel like you're stuck, you actually want to dissociate yourself. You want to uh, negate that you are having that emotion. You want to run away from it. And that's exactly what makes it longer. And it's exactly what makes it stick with you more. We have power and freedom with emotions when we start to understand how they function and what is their purpose. They function as very intense energy charges. So whenever you have an intense emotional experience, your energy is bubbling up and it's getting very contracted and it's getting very intense. So by moving your body, by moving your awareness, then you start shifting and becoming more fluid and start decontracting that energy bubble that started being created in your internal universe. So by moving your body, either dancing or just becoming more present to that emotion instead of running away from it, then breathing with it creates movement on an inner level. And in that way, the emotion gets more fluid and you start to become aware of what's going on with you and you take control over your own state of being. And that gives you freedom. And of course, through practice, through saying, yes, I allow all the emotion, all the spectrum of the emotion to flow through me and I'm fine with it. I, I'm not dissociating myself from it. I'm allowing it all in. Come by accepting it and just moving, continuously moving, you're being in the flow and you're practicing being in the flow. And that's a very feminine way of living life. So what I'm hearing is even if it doesn't come natural from the beginning, when you just feel overwhelmed by any kind of emotions, stand up and do whatever you feel like doing with your body, dancing, running, uh, going to the gym, but just move because it helps the energy flow and you get unstuck. But I want to point something because I was thinking these days while I was watching Grey's Anatomy. For those who are familiar with the, with the series, there are some moments when a, an important character of the series, Meredith Grey, backs up when she finds herself overwhelmed by a positive emotion, by love in, in this case. So even if the first impression is that most of us get uh, crazy when we feel uh, anxious or bad or we feel nervous or have f we fear something, uh, many of us react in very strange ways even <laughs> when we encounter positive emotions, but we don't see that. Yeah, is it because, true? Yeah, it's true. It's totally true because what triggers the blockage is the intensity of the emotion, not the charge, whether it's positive or negative. And funny for us human beings is that we long for positive emotions. We try to run away from the negative emotions. But funny enough, the way to access more positive emotions is by allowing the negative emotions to be part of our inner state of being. They tend to be at the beginning state of any practice, spiritual practice, more present than negative ones. And while becoming accustomed with their intensity and allowing this breath work and this movement work to, to be part of us, then that educates us the moment we encounter deep passion, amazing love, legendary ecstasy, to just breathe and move with that. And it's the same practice. And what does movement and breath bring? It brings an integration. It makes you become present and aware of living that emotion. And because emotions are amazing guides and uh, teachers, uh, they're not only just charged energy, they are charged energy bringing a message, whether it's positive or negative. And the moment we breathe and move with that, we, we start flowing and the integration happens because we become aware of the message it brings. For example, in that scene you're talking about, it brings the message of love. Yeah. 
And by breathing with that emotion, by moving with that emotion, you're stepping into love, which is something you ever wanted. (laughs) So it's funny, right? How important being fluid and flowing with your emotion is so intrinsically part of our manifestation process of who we want to become, of what we want to have and what we want to live. It's amazing because we crave for all these beautiful emotions, but when we really have them in front of us, we really run because we don't understand them. And I was thinking probably one of the reasons this happens is because most of the time it's a very new feeling. You get a very new intensity, a very something you didn't experience before. And you don't know what is that? What's that? Is the first time I'm feeling this? What is this? Is it good for me? It scares me. So aside from moving and breathing with what we're feeling, What's the second most important thing we have to do so we can really tap into the right meaning of what we're feeling in a moment? First step, turn fear of the unknown into curiosity. Second step, activate your observer and allow it to empower you by becoming aware uh, what's going on, putting that question, what's happening, what I'm actually experiencing. Because if you address those questions to yourself, and take the time and breathe with it, the answer will pop. So what's going on? What is the emotion I'm experiencing right now? What's the message it brings? What's the opportunity or the dysfunction that it's showing me? What would be an action that I feel called into into doing, into being, into becoming? And these simple questions can help you navigate and empower your observer to take charge and control the situation and give you access to take the action that you want or that best serves you in that moment. And how we, can we brave up? Because another thing that happens is that we don't express our emotions. It doesn't matter if they're good or bad, negative or positive emotions because we are afraid of what others might think of our emotions. I'm afraid to tell him that I love him because, oh my God, what's he gonna think about it? I'm afraid of telling my mother if, I don't know, she's getting me crazy with, I don't know what uh, obsession she has because, oh my God, it's my mother and I cannot tell her this. How can we empower ourselves to get over what people might think? Because it's vulnerability in the end. We're speaking about the most vulnerable parts of us. By understanding that we are the ones judging ourselves harder and harsher than anybody else. When you're afraid of judgment from others, you probably have a very strong internal dialogue of judging yourself and judging everything around. So an access for you to step into emotional vulnerability and become safe with it. And it takes a while. It's a process. Nobody becomes safe at the beginning or immediately with being emotionally vulnerable. But once you practice it, you cannot go back. It's that kind of a thing. Once you go red, you always go red or something like that. Uh, Because it's so fulfilling to be able to be so free within your own skin that you can be able to share whatever's going on without fear. And the first, first, first thing to, to address is your inner critic, your own inner judge. Because the moment you, you take it out of the space, you're not going to be so focused on other people's judgment because you're not, you're not thinking from that perspective. You're just going to settle more into being authentic about what's going on with you, giving the opportunity for others to step in their own vulnerability and give you a feedback on the same level. And it's an education. It is an education. And most of us in different cultures were not so used to having emotional vulnerability be a value. In other cultures, it has become a norm, but actually it's, a, it's the access to living authentic, fulfilling lives because you're free. You're just going to share what's going on with you and then you're going to flow to the next stage, the next thing that's happening. So you're not carrying your story with you all the time. And that allows you to be more fluid with the present moment and it allows more things to show up into your life in the direction of your dreams. 
Yeah, that's a matter of education because while you were talking, I was going back into childhood years and I remember like my teacher was telling me, don't cry, don't show that you're sad because you're being vulnerable now and what are the kids are gonna think? Or when you fall in love for the first time and you get bruised, you say, I'm never gonna show emotions or be vulnerable again because it hurts. And I was thinking if you're a young mother, how do you teach your little boy or little girl to never be afraid of emotions. I think that's on YouTube. You will always be afraid of emotions. I don't think because whenever you'll encounter a new intense emotion, you'll be afraid of it. Fear of the unknown is something that kicks in in our humanity all the time. But I think a way to empower kids to run with their emotions is to secure them by saying it's okay to have emotions. It's okay to be angry right now. If you feel angry, take a pillow and beat the pillow. It's fine. Allow your emotions. Know your emotions. Experience yourself in all those ranges of emotions because in that moment you will be able to uh, know yourself. And if kids are taught or are living in a climate where emotions are part of everyday life and nobody is dissociating themselves from it, they're not putting them under the cover, then emotions become natural. And kids pick it up and they become normal, natural, vulnerable on an emotional level without this being such a big thing. I'm, um, I'm remembering now uh, uh, one of our listeners wrote us some days ago asking how can I show my emotions, be them positive or negative, if I'm working in a very big uh, corporation when I have to face uh, 80% of my colleagues are males and uh, they are very shut down in front of emotions and I'm afraid of showing emotions because I'm I'm going to be considered weak. How can we address this kind of issue of women who work in environments where emotion vulnerability is really a no-no? I think there's two steps to this. First is emotions don't just show up. They always show up in a context. And the context is speaking to us about our desires or about our intentions. And the moment we make that link between whatever I'm feeling right now and the intention I'm having, conscious or unconscious, or the desire or the outcome I want to create, then this link will give me a map of what's really going on. And then by understanding more in depth, hey, I have the intention to be powerful at work, but be also okay with myself as a woman in this climate of being a man. I don't want to step over my femininity, but but I also want to perform. And when that intention is clear and I get pissed off at my boss because I don't feel that he includes all that I am as a woman or he doesn't address that I'm different than the other colleague that's a man, then... The anger that I'm experiencing is triggered by my intention that has somehow been blocked. So by going back to, hey, I'm actually angry right now because I have a commitment and I have an intention, then that creates a perspective. How can I generate? How can I create in my relationship with the outside universe? What can I put in place? What action can I take so that I can first give myself space for being a woman? and then educate other people that I'm a woman so that I can become performant and be supported in my performance as a woman. So when you link your emotion with your intention, whether it's triggering a dysfunction or whether it's saying, hey, you're on the right track, go for it, then that's just mapping your own territory. And mapping your own territory gives you access to manifesting whatever you want to manifest. It's very powerful. Okay, so my next question, emotional detachment and emotional well-being, there are two different concepts and I want you to walk us a little bit through to just be more clear what is what and which is which. For us at The Feminine, emotional detachment is uh, the capacity to become neutral through awareness about whatever emotion you are going through, no matter how intense it is. Because usually people, when they hear emotional detachment, they understand no emotions. And that's not true. Emotional detachment comes when you become aware, which is a a meditative practice, of 
containing, owning, understanding, breathing, moving with your emotions. And it doesn't necessarily come at the beginning stage of exploring your emotions. It's a much more grounded, mature, advanced way of living your emotions. And it, it guides you into emotional maturity, which is the capacity to be fluid with all the range of emotions from negative to positive, owning them, containing them, flowing with them, breathing with them, expressing them and becoming or remaining aware while this is happening, while you are experiencing all of those emotions. I think there's three steps. One is understand your emotions by accepting them and living with them. Second is accessing emotional well-being, which is the capacity to be fluid and breathe with your emotions so that you find yourself with more velocity in owning your negative emotions and stepping into positive emotions and increasing the quality of your life by living more positive emotions. I think one of the biggest challenges here is the addiction to emotional intensity. Most of us in our conquest of emotional well-being, we have to face that charge that comes from negative emotions. Most of us unaware at the beginning stage of the journey find ourselves addicted to emotional intensity in a negative way and by letting go of that intensity because when you are you know in deep fear or in deep anger you feel something at least you're not numbed so addiction to your the intensity of emotion is the second stage uh, beyond numbness beyond you not feeling anything but you have to let that go so that you can rewire your brain and rewire yourself to tap into positive which are at the beginning less intense they feel less intense positive emotions that come from self-care come from putting yourself in a place of harmony no matter what happens outside of you you breathing and becoming peaceful whatever gets triggered and it will enhance the experience of well-being and the experience of living positive longer and uh, longer periods of time even if you don't experience life so intensive like a drug addict <laughs> because we tend to think that well-being is i don't know having the roof get uh, on fire with intensity that's just the pinnacle of an experience but well-being fulfilling experiences of life quality of life comes from the capacity to have positive well-being emotions longer periods of time and i think the third stage is emotional detachment when you are not attached of you're like a zen buddha master you're not attached of spring or autumn you know, negative or positive emotions, you just let the weather come. And it's a very important process for women. And I think women tend to access more of this emotional detachment if they do the breathing and the moving of their feminine energy. And they don't have to wait to become a Zen Buddha master because it's so organic for women to flow. And if you go beyond your fear of emotions and you just allow yourself to flow, you will be able to contain your emotions and achieve this neutrality which will give you access to full open heart a full expression of that open heart while being aware i'm not sure zen master is something i meant to be in this life <laughs> so uh, more practical like learning by doing you started saying that um, moving and breathing is the key to success and to learning how to decode your emotions. So to end this podcast, like usual, can you give us a small practice that can guide us as a ritualistic practice through this hustle of everyday emotional whatever? Simple tips and tricks. A very regular ritual that you can do is give yourself permission 30 minutes or 15 minutes a day to either walk in the park or sit in your favorite coffee place and put the question, what am I experiencing? 
what are the three most important emotions I am experiencing right now in these situations in my life? What's the intention I have in those situations in my life? What do I want from those spaces, those relationships, those situations? Is the emotion giving me an access of the things going well in the direction I want? Or are they addressing a dysfunction that I need to look at, into and find a solution for it? And uh, if I really breathe and become aware of that emotion and I let it flow with it, and surrender to it in this way, what is the emotional growth I'm stepping into? And I think if you do this practice, no matter how you feel, whether there's bad days and good days or neutral days, I think it will just educate you on an emotional level and you'll become more aware and more able to deal with your emotions once you get triggered on the court in your day-to-day -day life and you can't go meditate <laughs> right then. And that's one thing. Second is when you get triggered and you have a very intense emotion, stop and take a deep breath from the belly for two, three, five minutes. Allow the intensity to cool off. And then you can either breathe with yourself and nurture yourself or go through the list of questions I just said. And it will help you understand what's going on right there in that moment. Um, or dance or shake your body, or start painting, or write, or walk in the park, or go in a lotus position and with your spine straight forward and be in silence. And all these little things, either on the long run or in very specific situations, can help you decipher what's the emotion telling me right now, and it can help you contain it, and learn to live through the intensity of it. And the most important thing is just do it. Stop reading about it. Stop theorizing about it. But take it as a very personal advice. Just do the practice. Do the work because it makes a difference. <laughs> I know this advice is for yourself <laughs> too. <laughs> for me too. <laughs> But I know that we all have with the internet and with the open source information we have access to, we tend to read a lot and tend to understand a lot about how things work. But when it comes to doing, we get stuck and we say, but I know this, but how that I'm not able to actually do it. So do it, do the work because yeah. it makes a difference. Yeah, doing the practice is knowing it. Otherwise, it's just a theory that you are, uh, you're on a theoretical level about it. That's actually the whole difference. It's, it's that if you really want to be a football player, and I use this analogy all the time because it's easy, if you really want to be a football player, staying uh, in um, the stands, talking about football or having a very clear explanation about the logic of football will never make you win the jackpot. It will, you, you won't put the ball into the net and you will not win the medal. If you ever want to be a football player, you just have to be on the court, screw it as many times as possible, and at some point you will put that ball in the net and you will win the medal. Yes, and it feels awkward, it sucks at the beginning, But then you'll just get used to it and you'll start being proficient. <laughs> <laughs> and it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Okay, so I think it's a wrap. Yeah, it's a wrap for sure. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't leave before jumping into your emotions and finding with curiosity what are they telling you. And before going to your next things in life, take a moment and subscribe to our newsletters. They're fantastic. Go on thefeminine.com, start here, and you'll receive also a free gift. You can find us on Facebook at The World of the Feminine. Write us at woman at thefeminine.com with questions, stories, and share your womanly experience. We're here for you, and we're here together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.